Good evening, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I'm John Salkowski, the owner here at Silver Fox Studios, and welcome to another Wedding Town Hall brought to you by Silver Fox Studios. We're really, really excited about our guest tonight. I'm so pumped up because great guest. I cannot stress to you enough, uh, Frank Russo, uh, the owner from Russo's on the Bay, is going to be joining us, and super, super excited to have him on and for you guys to hear what he has to say because... Uh, some really great stuff. Uh, but first off, we go into our little housekeeping part here, which is to welcome everyone and to say we appreciate the great feedback that we have gotten. We appreciate the positive response, and, and we are going to keep doing these until forever, pretty much. I mean, we started doing this when this whole pandemic situation started, and we've gotten such a great response that we are uh, absolutely set on continuing to do it moving forward. Um, that being said, we also want to make sure that we thank, now that now that we're starting to open up a little bit here, everybody's getting excited that they can get outside and do some things and, you know, but we can't forget all the efforts and um, you know, that, that the essential workers um, did for all of us. And so we, we always make sure that we give a big, big heartfelt thanks to them. And, you know, now that you're out and able to start to frequent these businesses, make sure that you support your local businesses that have sort of been grinding through this very difficult time for all of us because it is really, really important now that more than ever that you support them and that you are there for them. Um, and as life starts to get more back to normal, um, I just can't overstate that enough. Uh, as far as Silver Fox is concerned, we are open here in the Long Island office. Um, for new clients as well as existing clients to pick up albums or what have you. Everything is in order and in place. We've got these really fancy Silver Fox face masks, which are great. We give these out. We've got a lot of hand sanitizer and we've got gloves and we've got deep cleanings and fogging disinfectants and all sorts of stuff going on here. So you come here, you're like coming to the hospital. So you're in pretty good shape here. Uh, all right, uh, the only thing is we are only open on Long Island for right now. The New York City office is not open until further notice because obviously it's in a different situation, but we'll keep you guys posted and we hope we can get that open as soon as we can. All right, that being said, I am really, really excited. My next guest here, Frank Russo Jr. is a legend in our industry. He has inspired and influenced and really helped shape our industry in so many ways. Um, he started in 1987. He's been obviously in the food and hospitality industry for his entire life. He's probably one of the most respected people in the entire industry and one of the real the pillars is that he's given back in so many different ways to, to, to his community. I mean he's got a charity, Angels on the Bay, which is amazing. It's a children's charity. Just, I mean, I could list the things. If there was, if there was a Hall of Fame for caterers and catering halls, he would be like the first person in, inducted. So, that being said, um, I'm hoping you're all excited to see him. And now it is up to me to get him to join us, which I'm going to do. And here we go. All right, Russo's on the Bay. I think we're all right. There we are. Hello, Frank. How are you, my yeah, friend? Very well, thank you. You doing good? Yeah. yeah. Great to, okay, great to have there. you on here. Well, I appreciate the introduction. I appreciate the yeah. words. Thank you so so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, I don't know if you want to say hi to everybody and and let them know uh, what you're up to or whatever. But you, this chance for you to just say hi to the, to our audience here. Yes, yeah, so I want to welcome everybody and I uh, hope everyone's safe and looking forward to an opening. Yes. A good uh, future, everybody getting together. Yes, I think we all are. And uh, so let's just jump into that, because what we're going to discuss here tonight is how to, to find the perfect wedding venue, um, which your place is obviously one of those, and also navigating through this new time that we have here. So uh, let's jump into, you know, just off the bat. So what Russo's has been doing, because I know you guys have been really active uh, during this time with community outreach and stuff. What's Russo's been doing during the COVID-19 pandemic? in terms of, you know, that sort of thing? Well, we first started, it's like everyone else, trying to figure it out. Um, but I think the first thing was focusing on how do we give back and who do we really need to support? Um, so as we got together with the team, understanding community outreach, 
um, who's really in need that needs the support at the present time, um, and how do we keep ourselves out there, um, our brides, our social, our corporate clients? How do we let them know that we're here and we're in touch? So we put together a plan, um, which started with the community, with the curbside for catering, uh, with some gift certificates that went back to, to Vetro, so to speak, which is our restaurant. So that worked well, um, better than we thought. Right. Then we went into these little corporate meals that we started donating individual meals to the hospitals. Um, right. From that, we started getting traction where people wanted to donate to the hospitals. So it had to be GoFundMe pages. Right. Um, people would go ahead, the car industry, their advertisement, their marketing, there was none. So right. they would have to spend X amount of dollars on local charities or to a hospital. So they would call us for the food and we would right. run their individual meals. Right. Um, Roxanne's daughter, who's with uh, Angels on a Bay, she did a lot of charity outreach to the hospitals. So that kept us moving. Right. Um, then that, we do That's the really important part. I mean, uh, obviously, the community now, as I mentioned before, you know, local business is such a tremendous part of how this economy and this country is going to recover. And I, I mean, I remember, you know, back as far as Sandy and all the things you did back then. So I think the efforts that you guys have made there, uh, they can't be forgotten. I mean, it's just so important that uh, uh, the brides and couples that are out there watching this, it's so important that you really take that into account when you're thinking about where you want to have your wedding. Uh, not only do you want a place that is, you know, serving great food and uh, great service and all that stuff, but you want a company that has really great values. And I think that's something that, Frank, you and your team here have proven year in and year out, and especially at a time like this, which is, you know, truly, truly, you should be commended for that, you and your entire team. So, well, next I to say, on that, I just want to bring one point. You just sure, said I sure. had the team. My team was able to adapt um, to so many different areas and, and become successful with it. Joe Vaca, whether he ran 125 drives and still is. Right. Um, you know, it just goes on and on and how they all adapted to uh, to new environments, so to speak. Yeah. And overnight. Yeah. And the rest of my team members just came up to the plate and made it happen. And that's what it goes in when you just brought up a venue. It's when something's going on, not everything's going to be perfect. But right. is that team able to adapt right. and make things happen so no one sees it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that ability. We're and, just not perfect, so things right. are going to happen. And, and having, and, well, you're, you guys are about as close as it comes. Uh, and having great people there, which is at the foundation of it all, cannot be overstated enough. Um, all right, next up we have here, because there are new measures that every place has to take, every restaurant, every business, especially catering venues, new measures and safety protocols due to this COVID thing. What are you guys doing? How's it changed from before? What steps have you guys taken? Well, I think when I was watching your interview, you hit it on head with a lot of things you mentioned, sanitizing and all. But with us, we, has a, we have an SQF certified kitchen that's here at Russo's. So the measure's already in place. Um, we just had to take it to our other side of the kitchen, so to speak. Right. Of course, we do all the, you know, Costco's and that type of stuff, which comes out of the SQF. So right. we're trained, my team is trained, um, the setup is there ready. So it was pretty easy for us to transition. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I will just uh, to get so we, so they, uh, Russo's has, first of all, probably the best risotto bites in the world that uh, I've personally had the pr privilege of enjoying many times. And they're at your local Costco when you can go get them and you should. But they have a kitchen there, and when we were shooting there, it was unbelievable because you basically have something that is about as clean as like a hospital room where you're producing all this. So your kitchen already had all of this in place even before this, which I think is really interesting and important because people don't realize, like, look, it's not like this virus spreads, you know, it, you know, when people sneeze, it's not like they sneeze more because of this virus. It's sneeze, it's, it's spreading the same way as others, just more rapidly. But to know that you have a place that already had all of these in, things in place in terms of kitchen and, and hygiene and all that stuff is really, really important. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen this many sanitizing stations. And I'm going back, you know, last year when we did, did the video for, for the resort device, and as many sanitation stay, I felt like I was in a hospital. It was like, hey, and I love that stuff. I'm like looking for that all the time. So you oh, guys definitely you obviously that. take a lot of steps to, to make sure that, and I'm sure that everybody, um, so you're doing some appointments now with clients. And obviously, I'm sure your team has taken all the measures uh, if clients are comfortable coming in, right? Yes. Like you said, when it first happened, we are mobilized that they can work from at home, make the appointments from at home, or look at the calendars. So we started with that, and little by little, we moved in. If someone wants to make an appointment, 
Um, we were set up in the office, so it was social distancing, all the right measures in place right. um, for someone to feel comfortable and walk in. We actually signed up with Zoom, so if someone just wanted to take a Zoom from at home, mm -hmm. they would have that option also. Right. Um, the girls would walk through the building um, yeah. and explain detail to detail how it is. There's nothing like visiting it, especially if you've never been to Russo. You need you need to go. So I mean, uh, well, uh, if if there's anything you take away from this is that you, you have to make sure if you're a couple looking to to visit a place, you have to make sure you can see it in person. All right, next up, um, let's talk about the variables. You know, let's just go back to even like pre-COVID. Let's just talk about what's important for couples to look at when they are looking at venues. I mean, what are the couple of key points that they should look at uh, when they are searching for the right place. You know, I try to ask some of my team members, say, what is important to the couple who's walking in? You know, everybody has a different viewpoint. Um, just trying to get that out of them, everybody's looking for something different. Right. Uh, but really, if we go back to it, the most important piece is the food, the service, right. music. Um, yes. It's the team members you're picking, whether it's a photographer. You have to be comfortable with them. Yeah. You have to work with them. Because it's not just that one person. You're really booking a team. So yep. my salesperson can educate you, mm -hmm. introduce the venue. But who's going to carry that to the next step? Right. Is all the team members involved that can handle each piece to make everything very successful? Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah, you've got – listen, I mean, I remember – uh, one of the first weddings I shot at Russo's, uh, we were as as a photographer it was given a menu with I think it was like twelve courses, and I was like, uh, I'm the photographer. They're like, oh, this this is you know like twelve courses. I mean, are, are like I don't think I get that at a restaurant. So you guys have always done things above and beyond, uh, and that's I think the thing that you, you would agree with is that you know you, you find the type of place that you're looking for decor wise. Obviously, the food is a hugely important part of it, which you guys have uh, to the to the thousandth degree. Uh, service is is impeccable. You've got grounds that work there, and so all those variables uh, come into play, which I think Russo's is able to deliver to people in a way that a lot of places aren't able to. Well, when you brought up yourself, John, it's, we're a team. When you're walking here, it's all of us making that bride and groom happy. So we're a team effort. You're part of that. The music is part of that. Right. Each vendor is part of that. So when they're in here, this is their home. And yeah. we all work together for one common goal, to make the bride and groom happy and every one of those guests happy. That's our job. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. Every couple always, especially now with, with the way the economy has been affected, is thinking price point. Um, let's talk a little bit about that um, and how budget is, in my opinion, as cheapest is never usually the best. Uh, sure. And so let's talk a little bit about that and how important that is. I mean, there's always a value. Each person puts a value in different ways. Um, you know, take your establishment. You just don't bring photography. You bring a lot to that table. The same thing with Rousseau's. You know, we bring a lot to the table in many different ways. But if someone has a certain budget within reason, if they're flexible, we can work together. Right. Listen, if someone wants a Saturday night in prime time, that's one thing. But if you're saying to Frank, we love the venue, we love the food, work with my team, we'll be able to place you somewhere that we can still give you everything you're entitled to. Yeah. And make sure each one of your guests are satisfied at the price point within reason that you're looking for. Yeah. By the way, you're getting a lot of love here. Frank, on these, uh, everybody, and, you know, Sweet Sixteens, and all, I mean, uh, you, a lot of people here who, uh, uh, a friend of mine, I think, who worked for you, uh, and I, so um, you, you definitely have, your reputation precedes itself, and that's an important thing. Uh, next up, so, I mean, and this is something I, when I, we, I speak to all our guests here, best ways to do research, um, you know, obviously you have online and things, but you mentioned before, the ability for people to you have Zoom appointments now, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, which is important. I think, uh, you know, websites and you guys have a tremendous uh, web presence, which is great. It shows all the different facets of Russo's business, and I think that is one of the things I know you guys put a lot of effort into. Yeah, and, you know, how to pick a venue, how to do research, it comes in many ways. Um, but the end result is it's still that personal recommendation that goes so far yeah that's right. really you know has someone been in the hall has someone been treated well um who's visiting that's where you get your best best recommendation from 
Right. Yeah. I mean, the re reputation and people, family and friends who say, you got to go here. This place is amazing. And uh, that's, that's obviously a, a very important thing. I mean, so reviews are very important online. We know that. But no matter who we are, sometimes right. reviews are just not right. right. Um, you know, there can be a bad rule of my own self. So who knows? But the reviews are important, your research, but most, most important is that word of mouth. Right. Yeah. And, and that is, yeah. I mean, and like you said, you have review, like everybody has their own opinion. You have people saying things that, you know, be it competitors or whatever it is. I mean, and that's where I think you have to look at the big picture. Yeah. You know, since 1987, you know, I mean, if you were, you know, in, in order to stay around that long, you have to be doing some really great things because this is an industry where, you know, the weak don't survive, you know, in order to be in it, you, you have to be at the top of your game all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And especially uh, say things are always changing. Yes. Yes. Um, all right. So let's also, as, as we relate to sort of price point and, you know, like uh, talking about that time of year that people book, how does that, I mean, you know, obviously you could book in February, you could book in June, you know, what season, let, let's talk about that sort of thing. If, if brides and, and grooms are, are shopping, how that affects pricing and, and all that. Well, as you mentioned, the months, are so different. The first question is, can that bride and groom feel comfortable in a certain month period, January, February? Um, do they like December, which is all very festive with the Christmas decorations? Um, are they firm on the warm weather? Maybe they want to take warm weather, maybe go to a holiday weekend right. where that price point is good for them. So there's many ways to look, as long as we understand the season that they're really looking for, or if, like I said, if they're very, very flexible, we can find a home for them most of the time. Yeah, and that's an important thing. I, I think uh, when I speak to couples who haven't chosen a date yet or, or family or friends, I will say to them, listen, go in. I mean, if you go in saying, I have to have this exact date, uh, this exact month because I need it, and you know, and it's a Saturday night in October or whatever, and it's a like Columbus Day week, you know, like you're really limiting your options there and you're giving, especially the caterer, very little room um, to move. Whereas you say, hey, listen, you know, I'm open. I prefer to be married uh, in warm weather, but you know, if we've got something in March or April or what have you, it gives you guys a lot more flexibility to make it. Yeah, and that, that goes back to the sales team, my team too, support them, give them options before they walk out the door. You know, they may come in for a, a May on a Saturday night, and that may be their dream, but can we give them that dream on right. a different time of the year and let them feel comfortable with it? Yes. That's and, our job is to give right. the customer options, give the client options. And you guys absolutely can uh, deliver the dream regardless of when, because I've, I've seen it personally and, I'm, and I know many clients who have come here feel exactly the same way. So, all right. So now, especially because we've been sort of on pause the entire world for the last <laughs> three months, uh, it's really important to, you know, once these, the gates are sort of open, and I've, I've likened this to the Kentucky Derby where people are, brides and grooms are going to be rushing out of the gate here. How far, what's your advice for how far couples should look to secure their date in advance? I mean, I think the planning stage should be that year and a half. Um, it gives them time to book the venue, sell in, start to vi visit the vendors, you know, enjoy the moment. Right. Enjoy the time coming up to it because there is a lot of pressure for one special day, but you want to enjoy each piece that you're doing along the way, whether it's picking the photographer, picking the florist, the video, the band, enjoy those moments. Yeah. Yeah. You I know. mean, it is, it is a bonding process. You know, I mean, as a couple of you're a young couple, you've been together for however long and you know, this is your first big, investment or you know for, i mean and, and the most memorable and so i think that's really good advice is that you kind of enjoy the process i think a year and a half if not even more i mean we've we've booked a few couples into 2023 and even a 2024 so i think especially now given the circumstances people are going to get very sort of antsy about making sure that they secure a venue because we both know frank that you're when, when people book the venue, for, the venue has to be booked before anything else happens, right? I mean, you know, if they don't book you. Well, right. I mean, it starts with the church. We know that if that's where right. they're going to be. Um, then from there, it becomes the venue and then everything else along the way. Um, but like I said, you want to have each couple's different depending on the age. You know, couples are getting married 
old to say it's not like it was years ago. Right. When they were 22, 23. Right. Right. Um, so you <laughs> can put those two, three years on it. Yeah. Um, I feel that, you know, people waiting a little longer in their 30s. So that year and a half, times two, it's a good time frame. It gives yeah. time to plan, time to enjoy the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I agree 100 percent there. Um, all right. And, and I can personally attest to this, but this is probably one of the most important topics we're going to cover here. When choosing a venue, why do the people matter? And, and you've stated it now, but your team is amazing. And let's talk a little bit about that, because that is a hugely important part of choosing the right place. So you can choose Rousseau's, you can choose Frank Rousseau, but without my team, things cannot be executed the way they are. Right. You know, I'm blessed to have a team that cares, loves what they do, and will go above and beyond yeah. on any situation. Yeah. Uh, and that, I mean, and, and that is, you know, you, you need to feel comfortable. You need to obviously be, you're, you're treated fairly. They're working with you, as you mentioned before. They're willing to, you know, and, and that's, this is a very personal event. And when you come to Book Russo's, I have no problem. I, girls taking you through the kitchen, walking you around. You'll feel the people. You'll feel it themselves. No sense in me trying to sell you, because that's not what we want to do. We want you to feel comfortable in the venue you're picking. So as you're walking through the kitchen, you're walking through the dining room, most of the time there's something going on. You'll see my maitre d's, my team members. You'll feel it yourself. Yes. It has to work for you. I don't want to be the one telling you where to go. You want to be here. If you want to be here, we'll make that dream come true. Yes. Yes, and like you mentioned before, like like Joe Vaca, I mean, you you meet a guy like that, and you're like, wow, this this is a great person. This is somebody who I know is going to take care of my day in the best way possible, and uh, and that's why somebody like that is with you for as long as it because it's it's like you said, they could they, they're yet yes, your name might be you know as owner, but the team is what makes everything. Right, uh, Joe's a showman; he's there, but yeah. there's many team members that make it happen behind the scenes that people don't even see. But once you go behind, so you'll see them. Joe can execute anything as long as you've got that right team behind him. Yeah, yeah. And I, and I will say so if you can, because you give tours of the kitchen, right, to, to clients, right? I mean, Oh, you, absolutely. I love yeah. it. Yeah, and that's one of the most impressive things that I've ever seen in a kitchen. I mean, you guys dry age your steak. I mean, when we were shooting videos, I was like, what? what? This is crazy. I mean, you have like a fish. I mean, it was like, just go, go and add. Well, I always tell my, I tell my girls, please, when you go through the menu, anyone can write a menu. Now take them in the back and just show them how it can be executed. you got 300 people. How is that coming out of the kitchen? How are you giving me this menu to the level that we're thinking we're supposed to get? Well, go in the back, because the back will tell the whole story. Yes. Yeah, you and, a beautiful and chandelier, you got a beautiful front. But if that food is not good, yes, and most places do not want uh, the clients in the kitchen because it might not be. But your place is, I mean, fresh pasta. First of all, I've never seen that. I mean, like that's just you know. I mean, the fact that you make your own fresh pasta is insane. Um, the dry aged steaks, you know, the seafood. I mean, it, all of it. I was just like, wow. I mean, we were just yeah, we doing make our own sauces, make our own cavatellis. Our own tortellinis, yeah. our own bakery. Yeah. It's that I mean, way of how we're brought up. Yes. And the tomatoes. The tomatoes from Italy, right? Right? Yeah. That, those and those 20, tomatoes. 22 years, the same company. I've never changed. Yeah. <laughs> and if there's a video, you guys should watch, tune in to go to roostersonthebay.com, and there's a great video about your chef, right, going there? And, yeah. Right? The same yeah. from Titley, so he can educate himself, uh, get familiar with the process, how things are really done. Um, just yeah. the more I can educate my, my executive chef, the better he can bring yeah. things back to the table. And if you think about that, just that level of detail, um, you, you really, when you take it all into consideration, I don't, I don't know of any other places that are sending, you know, their executive chef off to, you know, check on where the tomatoes are grown, you know, 4,000 miles away. And that, that is just, I think, the, yeah. the well, me and Matt, who's the owner of the company, go back many years, and that was a trip that was given to me. Right. And I just felt it was so important for Spiro to go, to right. be able to educate himself. It's something to be proud of. Yeah. And I'm sure Spiro is happy that you said, hey, you know, you, you go and say, <laughs> you know, because I think he had an amazing time there from what he, he was explaining to me. Yeah. Um, all right. So ne next up, let's go over now because weddings uh, hopefully are going to start happening again. 
what do we think that weddings will look like when we reopen? I mean, what do we think? I mean, it's, it's a tough question to ask, and I don't know that we have the answer. I don't have that crystal ball, but, uh, you know, I do feel that people haven't separated enough. Um, you see that people do want to get together. They do want to start to celebrate together. So I'm hoping that carries right through, um, you know, family members. But I think right now, in the short term, it may be a little challenge for people, people to feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, in the long term, I believe that people do want to celebrate. They're starting to get that family value back again. Friendships, haven't seen. They took a taste of the last three or four months not being able to see each other. Right. Um, right. You know, it brings you back to reality. Like, this is what we do. We celebrate. Yeah, yeah. And we I think celebrate people together. Yeah, people are going to want to celebrate uh, more now than ever. Uh, because, people, uh, you know, I mean, the... the you know, it's been months since we've been able to gather in groups. And so when, when we're able to again, I mean, obviously all places, I mean, you guys, especially everybody's taking the proper precautions, there's the guidelines, there's everything that goes into effect and the sanitizing stations and everything. But at the end of the day, you know, being able to be out on a dance floor with your family celebrating, you know, the, the, the bride and groom and enjoying family time together that's what it's all about, right? So my, I have September 19th. My son's getting married. Okay. You know, and we're, that's all we're talking about. We can't wait for that day to come to celebrate. Right. Yeah. I mean, and that's it. And that is what the thing about weddings. And, and look, we've, we've rescheduled over, over 170 weddings. And I'm sure you guys have as well. Like it, it is the thing that is in the fiber of our culture. That is something that families, regardless of, cultural background, you all come together and celebrate in a way for the bride and groom that regardless of, how, I mean, this might have paused us for a little while, but it certainly will never stop. And I think that's why people are going to be really excited when we can start to, and like you said, nobody's got a crystal ball, but I think we're getting close. What, what that looks like in terms of how many people and all that stuff, uh, who knows, but I think we are getting close to that time where the gates will be open again, and we can all be dancing and partying together. I happen to agree with that. I think it's going to be a short period of time, and we'll be opened up and operating again. Yeah. All right. So let's. Uh, so couples uh, can find out more about Russo's secure their date through a couple of different ways, right? They can find obviously call you guys. Website. Yeah, phones are on. We've been on from day one. Uh, website. I said we always take an appointment with the Zoom. You're welcome to come in. Uh, whatever makes the client happy, we're here to service them. Yeah, and and honestly, I would I would just it's I think it's hugely important for couples that are watching to visit uh, the venue specifically, especially Russo's. Go there, see what they have to offer. Take a tour of the kitchen, see the uh, where the steaks are aged and the pasta, because it it is really impressive to know that you know it's not being delivered on some truck from wherever and and that is uh you know and i don't i don't know that every place is going to allow you to walk through their kitchen so d don't don't ask everybody well, we, but... I try, we, we try to educate them. when you come here we just want to give you good education the best we possibly can and then it's up to you now at least when you go out there searching you, you'll find that rituals may not be for you but at least you still walked away with good education that's our job it should be for you but anyway that's just my thank question. you um all right so what are the other affiliated Russo's brands besides Russo's you mentioned Red, let's just go through that so people know that it's it's not just Russo's but we also have some other affiliated uh, companies that go along with it oh we have Vetro which is down the block that's right. a restaurant now small catering establishment rooftop right. um, we have fresh gourmet which is the result of bites as you brought up um, which are amazing I'm I telling do. you uh, the first time I ever had them was at Vetro and I was like wow you know <laughs> You guys should sell these, and I think you already had that motion. But it was yeah, like... we're starting in uh, August first. We're going to start some uh, home delivery with uh, frozen meals, also. Right. We partnered up, and that'll be going out through Fresh Gourmet, also. And then we got then Angels on the Bay, which I mean, I know we didn't put this in our outline here, but just talk a little bit about that because well, Angel just brought it up. We did a little video the other day. We we're at Vetro, and we're having some fun, and uh, we lost the cigar night, of course, and we normally do a disco night in July. So we're all there hanging out, and they gave him to ride a bike into the water. So we raised 32000 <laughs> And a gentleman who asked me to watch his bike winded up in the water. 
<laughs> so, but it was a nice thing to raise for angels. That's one of the charities we had now um, for about 31 years. Yeah. So, but this will be a tough year for it because of what took place. Uh, we do have the main event in October. I don't know if I feel comfortable enough asking people after going through this. So we may just take this whole year and wash it out. But uh, we've gone, we've raised about $4 million we've been giving away. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, you were telling me when we spoke, when we talked about it in our conversation, uh, which you guys can see online, the whole thing about what you guys specifically do and make sure that, you know, like it's a very specific, this money goes. Yeah, we do it strictly for pediatric. Um, it's they're not going to the general fund. We'll actually have a team, the hospital send in a list of equipment that they need. Mm -hmm. We'll verify that equipment, sign off on it, and then make sure one of the team members goes there to verify it's in-house. Right. Yeah, because you don't, don't want... know exactly where your money's going. I have to educate somebody. If someone gave me money, this is where it went. I have to be right. able to tell them that. Right, exactly. And that's the th you couldn't. I couldn't have said it better. Like, yeah, I mean, so many people donate. You don't know what cost. I mean, you know that if you you donated money, it's going to this piece of equipment. It's going to something that is changing and saving lives, which I think is hugely, hugely important. Um, so, but listen, I can't thank you enough for coming on. I was so excited no, you. when you when you agreed to, uh, because it, you know you're you're a great a great person, somebody I admire and consider a friend. And so I'm really really thankful. I hope our guests who are watching um, and everybody that watches moving forward and views this uh, has been given a great amount of information here. Definitely make sure you go visit RussosOnTheBay.com, but really just go visit in person, you know, where, where you, you can get your mask, you can get your gloves, whatever you're comfortable with, but nothing will, will be like actually getting and going there itself. Um, I'm also just going to mention here once again that we are open here for if you're comfortable. If you want to come in to visit us, you can do so uh, for new appointments. If you want to do it on the phone, that's fine as well. Please also, we have our essential worker contest. Uh, give away a $5,000 photo and video package. Go to silverfoxvideo.com forward slash thank you for all the details and a really great video from our team here. Uh, but once again, Frank, thank you so much for joining us. It was great uh, having thank you. Thank you. Yes. And uh, we look forward to, I look forward personally to when we can come there again. And I am going to ask Jovaka for a huge plate of risotto bites. Um, that I can have with maybe a nice glass of Chianti. We can make that happen, right? That's the easy one. <laughs> I wish everybody stay safe. I'm looking forward to our doors opening and back to celebrating. Yes. All right. And thank everybody for tuning in. And <laughs> we will see you all next week. Thanks again, Perfect. Frank. Take care. Thank now. you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.